busted gasket. It only takes a minute to make one, so let me show you how. First thing we're going to need is gasket material, and this comes in a ton of different sizes, shapes, um, cork or paper, or this one's actually exhaust gaskets. I mean, you can make pretty much everything. Here's a, just an old gasket that has a ton of area that I can cut out other gaskets for that I didn't need for something else. You know, you can buy it in the roll. I prefer it not in the roll because it just never seems to lay quite flat. You fight it. I prefer to buy it in the flat sheets like this. But a lot of times you can even just, if you don't have gasket material, you can get away with just cereal box, Coke can box, you know, soda box. This cardboard, this cardstock is ideal material and it actually holds out oil and gasoline very well so this is my gasket it's completely torn up it's actually a um it would be kind of like a cylinder slash intake manifold gasket on this little two-stroke engine so the first thing i'm going to do is get a piece of material that's going to fit over the hole i need to cover and here's my old gasket material and i see people wasting all this time trying to cut it out with exacto knives and you end up breaking edges and stuff like that in this situation, one of the most important things is actually the inside. The outside is actually flared out and it doesn't matter as much. The inside is what matters more. But if you even if you had something where the inside and outside, you start on the inside cuts first. So I'm just going to take this piece of gasket material that fits over this hole. And our tool is this. Just a ball peen hammer. You need the ball to actually be able to do this. Now, a lot of people in my first video that I did like this is very concerned that you're going to just shatter this, whatever housing this is. This is pop metal right here. Whatever this cylinder, I mean, it's probably a zinc aluminum blend, just junk. You can see that the piston rod is just a piece of stamp steel, nothing high end about this at all. And it's not going to shatter. Trust me. So what we're going to do, we're going to lay it out just where it's going to cover. And what I'm doing is I'm actually hitting... I'm trying to hit on a side of this and use this natural cut edge around here and that's what's actually going to cut the gasket. So we're just going to set it there. I'm going to, I know where my inside edges is and you can kind of feel it and you're not hitting hard. And if I start out on something like the inside, it's actually going to hold it in place for me. So speed this up, but we'll go around. I lost my thing, but we can get it right back in place. There we go. We got the inside all cut out. Now, it's just a matter of the outside. On this particular engine, like I said, it does not matter. It's very big and just overly bulked up and I can actually just cut it out. It's no big deal. So I'll just take the scissors real fast. And since my outside doesn't matter, I'll just... But if my outside did matter, I would just do the exact same thing where I tapped around. Now, these holes are extremely, extremely small. On bigger bolt holes, what you would do is actually take the middle of the ball again, and we might be able to make this work. This is just so small that I would need a smaller ball. But you can see the exact impression of what I need to cut out. Um, on bigger holes, this will actually cut it completely out for you. And so now we can take this hole, and there's a couple of different ways to cut it out. For years, on larger ones, what I've done is just use sockets. I've just taken sockets on larger holes. You just put the socket on there, and you're able just to uh, pound out a hole. You're able just to pound it out, and on a hard surface, you're able just to cut out a simple hole. No big deal. Um, I've also used this. This is a leather hole punch to punch holes in your belt, stuff like that. This works amazing at cutting a variety of different holes. And recently I've upgraded to this. Um, it doesn't come with this. It just comes with these loose things by, I think it was uh, Tecton. I'll put a link below. Um, the edges didn't come very sharp, but I sharpened up all the edges nice and sharp. Um, made a piece of polished aluminum for it. But now I can take this i can put it over that hole mark that i made and just rotate it i could hammer it as well and we have a perfect hole i could do the exact same thing with this leather hole punch 
thing, but this just doesn't go very big. This just happens to be really small holes on this one. Most of the stuff I do is, you know, you're going to have like a half inch or a three eighths, seven sixteenths hole or something to that effect versus just this little teeny thing. So now I've got one hole down. I can actually place it and mark it. But by putting this one bolt in and now it won't move around and just screw it in just, just a little bit. Now it won't move around while I mark my other holes. And I'm gonna get this so I think it's centered nicely on there. And then just tap around on each one of these corners. And now I should have all of those marked exactly where those holes need to be and I can either use the, uh, the leather hole punch and just come in here exactly where it's at there we go we've got it all set on there all the holes are lined up good um, in combination with any gasket I use whether I store bought it or made it myself I love to use this stuff I learned about it through the marine industry. It's called number two gasket sealant. They sell it at every auto parts store. Nobody uses it. It never hardens and it's not an RTV. It's kind of like a tar, but it's like an adhesive sealant. Like if you have a gasket you're putting on, you need it to stay there so it doesn't shift around. This stuff is ideal. And if there's any imperfections, it will seal it up. You can see around the top. I mean, this is, it's never, it's not an RTV. It's just like a tar and it's old school and it works awesome. They also have a type one or number one that hardens, but I don't like that as much as the number. The number two is great. You're using a lot of boat stuff and stuff like that. And so that's where I learned about it. Love it. So now I'm going to just put a little bit on both sides and just set it on there. Scout gasket doesn't look that pretty because it didn't do perfectly around the outside, but the inside seals, it'll work fine. You can spend as much time as you want, but just hammer around. You're done. Let's put this together. Fire it up. I put a light layer down here. I like just to put a light layer on both sides. And then this will just go down and re-bolt on and put it all back together. Okay, let's see. See, that quick and easy. So I will definitely get asked below whether or not I use RTV instead of, you know, people, I only use RTV and RTV does work. I don't use it there often because I make my own gaskets and I find making my own gaskets with the combination of the number two gasket sealant, which is a tar. It's like a tar light substance that never hardens. It always stays, it thickens for sure. It gets really tacky, gummy um, over time, but it seals up and I have amazing results with this and since I can make all my own gaskets it's it's really not I'd rather have a paper gasket in this than just RTV I do use RTV on huge things I think you know I use some on like differential covers stuff like that but I don't use a gasket with that it's one or the other I feel that if you use a paper gasket cardboard gasket cork gasket with RTV it fails that's because the paper soaks up oil and I think when it soaks up oil it actually releases the bond so you would have metal RTV, paper gasket, RTV, metal again. And I think right in the middle where the paper and the RTV touch, the, I think the paper contaminates that bond between the paper and RTV and it leaks between there. So I never put RTV on a paper cork gasket because I think it always fails. If I'm gonna use RTV, I use it by itself. And just within the last year or two, I started using these mini caulk tubes because I absolutely despise these, these little, um, these little single use things because they harden, they split out the side. You can never get a consistent bead. It's ugly. You're smearing it with your finger, trying to spread it. Where the caulk gun, you're just. And I always just jam a huge nail in the end and I get these to last about a year. Um, but I go through them much faster now that they're these smaller tubes. And it was about the exact, it was virtually the exact same price I bought this off Amazon for two tubes. 
and a mini caulk gun, but these tubes actually work in a full-size caulk gun that's just longer. This is just more convenient for getting in the, uh, the smaller, you know, engine areas. But hope you guys like that. Uh, hopefully you guys, it'll save you guys some money. It's not worth, it doesn't say, you know, you can't make a gasket in every situation, but it definitely saves me time where I don't have to, you know, sure I can go buy a $3 gasket somewhere, but is it worth my time 20 minutes back and forth, 20 minutes waiting in the auto parts store trying to talk to the guy that has no idea what I'm looking for to find a gasket. So an hour worth my time where in five minutes I can make a gasket and back to fix before I could run to the parts store and back. Thanks for watching guys. See you soon. Bye. Get it. You tired? Nah, you're not tired yet. Come on. Yeah, you're tired. <laughs>